Hey, it's Greg from Scholar Farms and we're here in Raleigh, North Carolina. We're at SenseFly and we're gonna do a quick unboxing of the new EBX. Now the EB has had multiple generations of products. You can actually see it behind me, the iterations I've gone through, and this is the newest generation and has had some major updates within the platform. It comes with a pretty nice new plastic case with rollers. Uh, there's a lot of latches on this case, which is why I've unlatched it already for you just to save some time, but there's a lot of latches. So you're not gonna open it accidentally for you. So in the top, you'll find the vehicle and then underneath then we'll see the wings. So let's just walk through basically what comes with the EBX. So the first thing that comes with it is the main body of the vehicle. And we can go ahead and pull that out. And here you can see it's fairly lightweight and it doesn't have a sensor payload in it as of yet. So when it's shipped new, you're going to purchase your sensor separately and we'll walk through the sensors in just a bit for different options. And so here you can see the bottom of the drone is fairly robust and it has a nice kind of carbon fiber uh, layer to it and that way it can take multiple landings. And we'll go through the wings, but the wings just pop in and then you would pop in your sensor. And then at the top here, then we have a battery bay. So you can just unpop that and you'll put in the batteries and we'll walk through that in just a bit. It comes with two different batteries and so here you can see they're actually smart batteries. You can push here and see the battery level on them and they advertise 60 minutes of flight time. Now you can get a new extended range battery which can go up to 90 minutes and that's both the battery and a software update on the platform. They've also updated the charger to the EB platform and so there's comes with a nice balancing charger so you can see that here, and you can actually charge two batteries at the same time. So that's a nice feature. You could have one in the plane, and then you could have two on charge and really be in business kind of all day long. Within the case as well, you're gonna have extra props as well as kind of the rubber bands that come along with the props. You're putting three rubber bands onto your propellers. And then as the drone lands, if you beat up a propeller or so over time, then you can just swap those out and swap out the rubber bands. So nice disposable parts there as needed. You also have the telemetry modem in here. So we'll just go ahead and pop that out. So this is a USB modem and you can orient the antenna based on what direction the vehicle is flying. And you just plug this into your laptop and then you would use the eMotion software, which is a very feature rich software for dialing in your mission planning. And that allows you to do everything from setting your takeoff and landing point, as well as your map area and even terrain following. That way, if you're mapping in steep area, the drone will maintain that elevation and you'll get good quality map results that will maintain that pixel size. We'll go ahead and pull this drone out of its box and then I'll show you the wings. So there's two wings that come with it and these are updated wings as well. They have a little clip here, a little button that's a release and these just pop directly into the vehicle. And then you also wanna make sure that the button here is also kind of clicked in and that way you know the wings are firmly set within it. So we can put on the other wing. So you can see here then my wings are firmly set and then the buttons are popped out and that way I know that my wings are really secure in there. That's a new kind of updated feature within the platform. Also updated, you can have uh, your pitot tube here is actually removable. You can get it as a spare part. And that way if it clogs because you're working in a very dusty environment like a mining site or something like that, you can pop in a new one just while you're out in the field. And that's a new improvement of the platform. Also improved is a new laser altimeter or LIDAR uh, that does range detection. So before it was an optical flow camera and now they have a LIDAR embedded in it. And when the drone is coming in, it can sense terrain. And if it's getting too close, it can pull up in a safety feature as well as it aids in the landing. So that's kind of the overview of the platform itself. It is embedded with RTK or PPK options and you can turn that on as needed as an upgrade within the software itself if you want that precision mapping. So altogether, it's a fairly robust tool for surveying and getting good quality data. So let's go ahead and clear this off and we'll go ahead and walk through our different sensor options for the EBX. Okay, so we've cleared off our hard case and now we're gonna look at some of the different sensor options for the new EBX. So 
The first option is really your standard soda camera. This is a 20 megapixel camera with a global shutter. That means you're not going to get movement or distortion into your imagery with a rolling shutter. And so it's a good mapping platform. This is actually the corridor mapping version of the camera. And so it's actually distributed. So it's lengthwise. So it's mapping for particular corridors, like you're mapping a railway or a pipeline. And that way you can just go down and back and get adequate overlap for mapping a corridor. The newest option that I really like is actually the Soda 3D, and this is on a gimbal. And so as the drone is flying, it takes pictures at 90 degrees straight down or nadir. And then it also pivots every second or so and takes pictures at 45. And you can alter that in the software. And so as the drone is flying, it's moving the camera and that gets you really good imagery for 3D models. So if you're using photogrammetry software like Pix4D, this would actually be amazing for mapping, say, in urban areas if you're trying to get buildings, for example. Or in my applications, if I want more of the 3D metrics of the vegetation that we're mapping. Speaking of vegetation, moving on, uh, so there's an integration for the Sequoia camera. It's a four band multi-spectral camera that you could then pop in and get your NDVI metrics or other vegetation indices as well. So there's a nice integration kit as well as the light sensor on top for doing radiometric calibration. Then the most recent announcement was the integration of the Micasense Red Edge. So similarly for plant mapping, this is a five band multi-spectral camera that fully integrates into the new EBX. And so here you can see the light sensor on the top for capturing the irradiance data. And then on the bottom, you have the sensor. So that's a brand new announcement from Micasense and Sensefly for that integration in. And so that's another sensor option for plant mapping. And then there's also a new camera, a new sensor called the Area X. And that camera is more like a smartphone camera. And so it's a 24 megapixel camera, a little bit higher resolution than the Soda, but it will allow you to map in more variable light conditions. And that way you can map kind of closer to dusk if you want, and would be better if you know that you're gonna go into conditions where you need that dynamic range of the camera. It would be better for data capture in that point. Slightly heavier than the Soda, uh, but all around an interesting sensor to think about. Okay, the next sensor I wanna talk about is one of the newest sensors that is on the market. It's the Duet T that fits in the EBX. And this is actually a pretty interesting sensor. It's actually a dual sensor with the RGB from the Soda. So you're looking at that 20 megapixel. And then it has a dual thermal camera on there as well. And so they're going to trigger and overlap identically so you get a thermal map and an RGB map when you process and the reason that that's interesting is that the thermal often is difficult to stitch but it'll use the positioning from the soda RGB in order to get those image overlays so this sensor actually will be good for a range of different applications from inspection if you're doing solar farms to on my side I'm interested in for agriculture or forestry where you're interested in thermal differences within the plants so that's an interesting sensor as well that fits right in that payload bay. Okay, so these just basically pop in and out of the sensor bay and you can just pop those in and switch your cameras out and that actually adds a lot of different flexibility to the type of data that you're going to capture with the EBX. And it is a significant investment in terms of a tool, but if you are flying drones commercially or you're doing research or you really need a platform with a lot of capabilities to cover a large area at 60 minutes you're looking at hundreds of acres or at 90 minutes you're looking at even more and so you can really pound through the acres and when time is money this gets the job done so that's just a quick walkthrough on the ebx i hope that's interesting to you i'm greg with scholar farms and we'll talk to you again soon